Please don't touch anything. Sorry, Mr. Havisham. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to touch absolutely everything, including this naked lady lamp. I also might have to sniff some stuff, possibly lick some things. These Tootsie Roll Pops come to mind. Are you a skeptic, sir? But Lane's the real believer, so I guess you could say that. Just as I thought. Please leave. What? Sean, I'm sorry, sir. You are a skeptic. Therefore, you must wait in the hall, preferably at the end. You're killing all of my jujubes. <laughs> jujubes are candies. Exactly. Leave. And Mr. Guster, I will carefully ponder my next move and your future with the company. Let's talk, Burton. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Haversham. Sorry you don't believe me, but I do understand. Can we speak privately? Just one second. What's your game? I have two games, Red Rover and Lawn Darts. We'd need at least four for even the most rudimentary game of Rover, and they don't make Lawn Darts anymore. Too dangerous, but that's not why I'm here. I sensed several things in that house that I couldn't tell you with other people in the room. This is getting desperate, Mr. Spencer. But please, wow me. You were raised by your father. You were raised by your grandmother. It was her ring. Her ring that your wife wears now. OK. Perhaps my father wasn't as present as I'd hoped. And yes, my wife wears my grandmother's ring. That doesn't mean anything. Maybe not to you. But the sanctity of marriage means a lot to your grandmother, and having an affair with, what, a secretary? That just feels wrong. No matter how good her pop or deli is. But just what the hell are you accusing me of? Getting my chocolate on the floor. Is this Bianca's pop or deli? I hear voices, lady voices in the house. No accusations here. I'm just telling you, your grandmother is very disappointed in you, and she doesn't want you to go to jail. Nothing you accuse me of is illegal. He completely revamped our inventory system. Repackaging samples and reselling them, while lucrative, is highly illegal. So what is this now? A shakedown? No, there's no shakedown. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm a psychic. And with great power comes great responsibility. And that responsibility I share with Gus. All we want is the opportunity to continue doing our work. Just between us? I'm a psychic. I can't lie. Mr. Guster, back to work. As per our conversation, your raise will be reflected in your next check. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm confused. Spend a little more time on your own business, Frank Jim. Excuse me. I know about you, too. His hair is horrible. Uh, this ticket is from 30 years ago when my dad ran the shop. Yeah, I'll have to go look through the box. Box? What do you think the box is? A giant room like in Raiders? I think it's a box. Secret catacombs underneath the building like a national treasure. Shame on you for knowing that. This is where we keep all the old unclaimed stuff from over the years. As I said, a box. What do you think's inside the box? Will you calm down? I can't, man. There's stuff in there. All kinds of stuff. Old stuff, shiny stuff, secret stuff. How come you're not as excited as I am? Because I'm not a raccoon. You look like a raccoon. Hey, you're in luck. This ticket here matches this old receipt. Not a lot of info on it, I'm afraid. Oh, I know what that is. Shit, we did it. Right. Your case. Oh, I'm getting something here. 
Oh, this is intense. I can see Eugene. He's desperate. He's sweating nervously. He's stinky. He wants to get rid of something. Cover his tracks. Hide where he's been. So he brings in the title to his car. That must be the vehicle identification number right in there. Right. Whose benefit was that for? Don't ever question my methods in front of a civilian, okay? Never do that. And remember, tomorrow night will be ladies' night at the Top Flight Dance Club, where it's the 70s every night. Don't worry. I think Pookie remembers the 70s just fine. By the way, I'm just, just putting this out there. Once we resolve this case, preserve your legacy as a detective, you don't have to say thank you. No biggie. Of course it is. In fact, let me say it right now. Thank you, Gus. You won't. That's Pookie. Let's go. Officer Spencer, long time no see. Uh, what brings you gentlemen to my establishment? Well, Mr. Pookie. <laughs> As you may have heard, the DA recently overturned the conviction on the Eugene Franks bombing case. Maybe I heard, maybe I didn't. Right. Well, we're looking for information on a few people that might have used to run with old Eugene. Sorry, I, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, all right, I know how this works. Gus, hit the other side, give him some money. No offense, guys, but I don't need your pocket change. Mr. Pookie, I can see two of Eugene's partners in crime, a man and a woman, dangerous, highly skilled with military weapons, but not U.S. military, smuggled weapons. I used to trip like that, always looking for the escape. Pookie, he's, he's, he's cool, he's a uh, psychic. Really? Then I can dig it? Spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> Third eye. That's where it is. Hey, 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 you guys are deep, like me. Give me five. Hey, hey, hey. So listen, you were dead on it. The burglars weren't after the merchandise. That's right. So what were they after? One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, four, five. What? I'm seeing four and I'm seeing five. Lassie, four and five. Nine, the number nine. No, four times five. 20? Five and 20, five times 20. 100. Minus four times four times five. Four times four times five. 80. No, 20. 100 minus 80 is 20. We all have our math facts straight, Mr. Spencer. Is this going somewhere? Skater number 20. She's the one who dumped all this stuff. That's Rita Lethal Weapon Westwood. OK, great. We got one. We need all of them. Correct. This is bigger than Westwood. A lot bigger. Juliet's close. OK. Lasseter, let's get someone on the lookout for any more dumping sites around town. We've got to get to Zilks, and we've got to check something out. If you say pants, I'm going to sock you in your Adam's apple. Sock you in your The truth is, I'm actually a psychic, a professional one. And I am getting a major reading right in here. You are? <laughs> there it goes again. Well, what's it saying? It's saying that you are a middle child. Yes, yes, I am. It is also saying that you are not a bank robber. You know this? Yes, very much so. There is something else at play here, Phil. Something nefarious and also evil. Oh, good. <sighs> you do know. <laughs> I can't right. keep up this ruse okay. any longer. Please, how's my wife? Your wife? Yeah, she's scared. Is she scared? Uh, yes, she is scared. Oh my God, Joanna, I'm so sorry. Can you, can you get a message to her? Yes. I believe I can, yes. Joanna, Joanna, listen, Joanna. This morning I was confronted by a man, I don't know who, and he told me that he had kidnapped you and was holding you somewhere, and if I didn't walk into this bank right then and get him these diamonds and drop them in a mailbox down the road, he was gonna kill you. And I screwed up. And I don't know how to get out of this, honey. I'm so sorry. Oh, wow. Phil, that was something. I mean, it was just really jam-packed with uh, information. It was also a little breathy, oddly soothing. She said not to worry, everything's gonna be okay. But how? You don't have to. Okay. But how? 